Today I'll share with you the 17 hacks that will help you become a JavaScript ninja. You can use them in your next project, maybe to build that startup idea you have that can change the world, or just to impress your boss at work and get that sweet promotion you want. By the way, the last hack that I'll show you, I discovered it by accident while making this video, and it blew my mind. Let's get into it. Number one, assigning values to multiple variables. So the regular way of doing it is you first declare your variables and then you assign them one by one. But as a ninja, you can actually do something like this in only one move, and that's possible through JavaScript concept called destructuring. So the way it works is that it unpacks the values of an array or an object into distinct variables. So you can see how it's done for an array here, but the same can be done for an object. Let's say we define an object called ninja and we want to access every one of those fields into their own separate variables. And to do it, you just destructure the ninja object this way. Now, every one of those variables will contain the values of the corresponding field in the object. So if you print one of them, for example, you will see the corresponding value. The structuring actually has many applications, and a nice one is just to swap the values of two variables. The old way of doing it is, for example, let's say we have two variables, yin and yang, that have the black and white colors. The amateur way is to define a temporary variable and then to, in two other steps, you can swipe the values actually. But as a ninja, again, you can do everything in a single move. And with the structuring, you simply assign the values to the opposite variable. Now, how do you do if you have an object and you wanna know if a certain property exists or not? One way you could do it is to check if that property field has a value or not. Another way is to use a method available on every object called has own property. But even better and shorter than that is to use the in operator. You simply write the name of the field, in, and then the name of the object. And that will return you true or false depending on if this property exists in the object or not. Now I'll take our ninja object again and I want to add a weapon object. What I would like to have is a new object that has the fields of both of those, both the ninja and the weapon. And that's very easy to do using the next hack called the spread syntax. The spread syntax allows you to expand objects and arrays. So for example, the way it's done here is that the ninja and weapon fields will both be expanded and wrapped into this new object that will have all of the fields combined. And the same can be done with an array. So if we start with an array of three elements and we want to add it into a bigger array, array two, we spread it there and the resulting array will have five elements inside of it. And what's nice with spreading is that you can combine it with other hacks, for example, destructuring. So if we take our ninja and we wanna destructure it to get all of the variables, maybe we don't need all of them. Maybe we only need the name and the age and we don't care about the rest. That's where the spread syntax is convenient because you can store all of them into one sub object, essentially. Power will now contain all of the properties that are not the name and the age. Another cool use case of the spread operator is using it with functions. So let's say we have a function that prints the fields of the weapon object. Instead of writing those arguments one by one, we could simply spread the weapon object and it will result in the same thing at the end. Arrays are a very powerful data structure in JavaScript and you have a lot of functions available for you. But one hack that few people know is that you can actually control the size of your array by assigning a value to the length property. So for example, we started with an array of five elements and I want to trim it down to only the first three. So I assign the length to be a value of three. And if I want to completely empty it, I assign it a value of zero. Now let's say we want to get the last element of an array. One way to do it would be to calculate the length of the array and from that you can extract the index of the last element. But even simpler than that, we can use the slice function but with a negative index. If we use minus one, this actually gives us the last value of the array. But it doesn't stop there. You can actually also get the last two elements if you assign a value of minus two and more if you assign a lower value because what slice does with negative values is that it starts the index from the end of the array and then it goes to the beginning. Sometimes you will encounter arrays that have duplicate values and you might want to get a new array that has only unique values. That's possible using two hacks. One is using sets, which is a data structure that can only have unique values, and then use the spread syntax that we just saw a minute ago. That allows you to have a new array that has only unique values of cryptos. Arrays have a lot of functions available that you can pick, map, filter, for each, and more. But one that in my opinion is very underrated is the reduce function. The reduce function allows you to take an array and then to turn it into another form, a reduced form. But what's interesting there is that there is no limit as to what that reduced form has to be. It could be a simple number if, for example, we want to get the sum of the values of this array, but it could also be another array itself. It could also be an object. It all depends on what is the initial value that you'll pass to the reduce function. And then inside of the callback, you can build the return that you want. So here, for example, instead of returning a single number, what I'm actually doing is returning two arrays. One array that has all the numbers below five and one array that 
that has all the numbers above five. For the next hack, what we wanna do is to build a string that has variables inside of it. The old way of doing it is you assign the variables and then you use a concatenation with strings, but you have to keep track of the spacing and the variables. It's little annoying to do and easy to make errors. But the ninja way to do it is to first deconstruct your object to have your variables easily accessible, and then you can just plug them using the syntax into your string. If else statements is something you'll encounter a lot, but in some situations it's a little too verbose. If for example, you have a variable and you wanna assign a text depending on if the number is positive or negative, it's a lot of lines of text for something that is very simple to do. But as Ninja, again, like every time, you can do this in one shot, in a single line. And you can do it using the ternary operator. So the syntax, the way it works is you write your expression first, then you follow it with a question mark and then the values if it's true, it will take the first value, and if it's false, it will take the second value, which is the equivalent of the else statement. But the ternary operator is actually not the only way to simplify if-else statements. One other way is maybe you're not trying to assign a value this time, but you want to check if a certain variable or value exists, you want to execute some action. So you could just write it as an if statement, or better, you can use the end operator. So if the first expression evaluates as true or as existing, then you can execute the follow-up code on the right side of the end operator. Another example is if you wanna assign a default value. So sometimes you don't know if a certain variable exists. It could be a field in an object that you're not sure if it exists or not. So you check if it does exist, then you assign it. Otherwise, you assign a default value. But there is a one-line alternative to this using the or operator. So if the bank status exists, then it will assign it to a variable but if it doesn't, then it assigns the default value using that OR operator. Next hack is about logs, and everyone knows how logs work, right? Right? Yeah, for sure, that's the first thing you probably learned when you were learning JavaScript, is how to print hello world in the console. But do you know that actually the log function is not the only function available in the console? If you want to print an error, you can use console.error and it will show the error in red. If you want to print a table or an object, you can use console.table and it will display a nice table. If you want to group logs because they become hard to read or you have too many of them, you can use console.group and you can mark it with a label. If you want to print some information, you can use console.info. Ultimately, all of this comes down to the same. You're just trying to print something in the console, but it does make it nicer and easier to read if you format it correctly. This next hack here is so elegant. Sometimes it does happen that you have numbers that are stored as variables in your code. For what whatever reason, maybe it comes from the API, maybe you scrap that data from somewhere and you need to parse it to turn it into a number. So you can use parse int, you can use number, but one cute, elegant little hack you can use is simply put a plus in front of the variable and that will automatically turn the string into a number. What could also happen to you is encountering objects that have only one field that is deferring. And that's pretty annoying to deal with. So what you can do is to make that property actually a dynamic key. So I can just create a function that generates this object using that dynamic key and I can just call it and you will see how it's generating an object that has the key that has been replaced by that string I just passed to it. Now we're getting to the most interesting hack of this video, the one that surprised me the most, honestly, and it's called the design mode. When you go to the console and you type document.designmode on, you can start changing things in your page directly. So for example, we're on my YouTube page here and I wanna add myself just a few subscribers, like we're gonna turn from 1000 to 1 million. Actually, why limit it to 1 million? Let's put 1 billion, nice. And I wanna change the video views as well. The problem here though is that if I click on it now, YouTube is gonna actually open the video. So what I'm gonna do first is add a piece of code to disable all clicks. Perfect, I can click and nothing happens. So I'll just increase the number of views on every video. I can change the text, I can change the title, I can remove things, I can delete some videos and I can move things around on the page as well. So obviously it's not as powerful as using the inspector, but it's just a nice little way of visually changing things on the DOM. All right, my ninjas, those were the 17 JavaScript hacks. Good job for making it till the end. Subscribe if you wanna see more content like this and I'll see you next time.